who knows. But but Quenville, you know, the guys won three cups um, there in in Chicago. Um, he's going to get another job. The question is when. Right now, he's owed the majority. He's only, what, 13, 10, 12, 13 games into the season. So he's the, owed the majority of his $6 million this year and $6 million next year. So the question is what happens. L.A. just fired their coach the other day, John Stevens, hired Willie Desjardins as their interim coach, which is interesting. It's kind of like when, they hired, when the L.A. Kings hired John Torchetti to come in. He wasn't in the organization, brought him in as an interim coach, and then planned to revisit it. That was a lot with a lot less uh, in the season in, I think, 2006-7, maybe, or 5-6. Um, but this is for the majority of the season, so they'll have a tryout here, but the reality is they did this to see what other potential coaches will be available, and now Quenville will be definitely a candidate for that. The other thing here that I have said all along, is, and I've said this, this is one of those things I've said privately at dinners for weeks now, is the day that Joel Quenville is fired from the Chicago Blackhawks is the morning that Mike Yo wakes up and ha- and has a conniption fit. Um, <laughs> because I have just because I've just always felt that if they were going to fire Mike Yo in St. Louis, it would be if Quenville was available and you can bring him back to that organization where he was many many years ago as an assistant. Now, um, it, the thing that that makes this tough is that. Quenville has two years left on his deal. If you just consider that this is the first year of two years left, um, you know, so this year and the next, are you going to let him go to a division rival? So this isn't, you know, again, in, in, in professional sports, if you're fired, you're really not fired. You are relieved to your duties if you have term left in your contract. So the St. Louis blues can't just today call up Joel Quenville right now and say, you want to come here. They have to ask permission. Does the Blackhawks even give him permission to talk to a team like St. Louis if, if this is something that would be in the works? And then the other thing is, is that with that much term left, with the owner of the Blues, I can't imagine that the Blackhawks would let him go to a division rival um, unless, at a minimum, that the, the Blues are willing to take on his entire contract which a lot of times, you know, uh, when, when a coach is fired, you'll actually negotiate with the other team. All right, we'll pay him this, and you pay him this. But if, if you're Chicago, you're not going to let him go to a division rival unless, they're, to me, they're at a minimum paying the whole thing. So, so I think it's very premature to think that he would go there, but, but this definitely uh, puts, um, you know, Mike Yell in a pretty uncomfortable position, I would think. And are there any signs of hope for Mike Yell right now? Well, I mean, you know, there was two games ago and they were coming off two games in a row where they had pretty impressive victories. They'd scored 24 goals in the last five games and they clearly took a step back against the Wild. That is as big a butt kicking as I've seen the Wild levy in my career covering them. I don't remember a Wild game off the top of my head where they dominated from the opening puck drop to the end of, end of the game the way the Wild dominated the other day. Now, was it because the Wild were dominant, or was it because the Blues were horrible, or was it a little bit of both where the Wild kind of just sucked the life out of that team um, and made life awfully difficult on them? Who knows? But that was not a good win the other day. Uh, Doug Armstrong, the GM of the Blues, was in the press elevator going down with us the other day, and he looked like he was going to kill somebody. Um, very upset with the, just the way that his team played that night. And, and so... You know, I, I feel for Mike. Uh, you know, Mike. Yeah, Mike thought they were coming out of it. I mean, uh, and and so, um, you know, they obviously took a step back the other day. They have a chance to to um, you know get themselves uh, back on track here this week. But the Wild, um, you know, the Wild uh, basically, you know, they they really levied some damage on that team because again, they go, they go there at the end of this seven game road trip again on Sunday afternoon and. You know, let's put it this way: <laughs> If the Wild um, played as hard that game for Mike Yo the last time his job was on the line, Mike would probably still be the Wild coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that and that's the secret, isn't it? Just getting the guys to play for you and not getting over and say the wrong things. Uh, let's think. Uh, let's get back some stuff about the Wild, Minnesota Wild, who are actually a really good team uh, so far this year. Let's thank WizKids.Tech, W-H-I-Z-K-I-D-S.Tech, uh, Minneapolis company. Very nimble, uh, very responsive, very friendly. Michael Thanner's a, a great guy and with, with an excellent staff. And along with uh, all the other things we told you about, there, how they can help you 
as a uh, help you with your technology as a, a local company. Uh, they also have the ServiceNow Help Desk with Heart. They are very responsive and very easy to deal with. If you are working with them, you will always be able to reach them. Hello, Minnesota sports fans. This is Michael Fanner, founder and CEO of WizKids. WizKids is a Minneapolis-based managed IT, hosted VoIP, and cloud services provider. Businesses today require fast response times, skilled support staff, clear communication, and technology recommendations that align with their business goals. At WizKids, we do this each and every day with our clients. When you call into our help desk for support or work with one of our higher-level engineers on a complex issue, you'll find our staff personable and ready to roll up their sleeves to help you solve your technology problems. Reach out to WizKids today to find out how we can help your business meet your technology goals. Visit us online at wizkids.tech. That's wizkids.tech. Wizkids, make it happen. So why, I know we got into it a little bit at our last show at Delano's, by the way, our next uh, live show at Delano's is, I think we decided November 14th at 6 p.m., is that correct? Yep, my mom will be there. Your mom will be there, so uh, please come out and join us at Delano's Pizza, uh, November 16th, I'm sorry, November 14th, 6 p.m., meet Russo's mom, I think Don Mitchell will be there as well, and it's always just, it's a good time, it's a great place, we can highly recommend Delano's Pizza, both for delivery, but especially going in there and uh, just hanging out, watching all the big screens, everything else, delanospizza.com. Um, so I know we got into this a little bit at our last live show, but why is this wild team playing so well? Well, I mean, it, I will say depth is huge now. I mean, we all always talk about depth and the improved depth of the wild, and we kind of always kind of scoff at it and maybe roll our eyes, but there you have a game the other night where, you know, Aristotle obviously had, had a big night and a couple points and, and a 400th goal. But who were we talking about? We weren't talking about Miko Koivu or Mikhail Granlin or Zach Parisi or Ryan Suter or whatever. We were talking about Eric Fair and Marcus Foligno and JT Brown and Greg Pattern and Nick Sealer. And when in our entire lives have we all watched this wild team played um, at least in my tenure of covering him since 05, and, and we're always talking about the fourth line and the third defense pair. Um, it, is, it is, you know, pretty cool to see how well they're playing right now. Eric Fair has been great. You know, somebody asked me recently on Twitter, I almost like fell over, what does Eric Fair do for this team? I'm like, are you watching? He, what he's done for the penalty kill on this team, what he's done as a veteran right handed centerman on that fourth line. He plays his role perfectly. Marcus Foligno is playing absolutely awesome right now. Finally, JT Brown showed up. And where this team gets really good is that their third defense pair, for the most part, they had a little, I thought, a tough couple games, in, especially Pattern in, in Edmonton and Vancouver. But they've been great all season long. It has allowed um, Ryan Suter to not play his 28, 29, 30 minutes a night. Um, and, and he is still, by the way, hurt. I mean, this guy is watching him again, walk around after practice yesterday. It's just hard to believe that he's playing at such a high level. Um, so you have pattern and sealer playing like this and it, it's changed the outlook of this team. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, you know, you know, wake me up when the playoffs start and, and tell me, and you know, how's this team going to be different? And I would say this could potentially be what makes them different. You know, I mean, it's a story that I'm thinking of writing for the athletic in the next couple of weeks is, all right, you know, yeah, if, if they continue playing well, okay, yeah, whatever, they're playing great, but, you know, what makes this year different? And the one of the things I would say is that, you know, if they're healthy, uh, they, they have a lot more depth that you can suddenly roll lines and get contributions. So the other thing is they are, and we talked about this on the last show where I think I mentioned that I met somebody on a plane that knows an Oilers player, and then Oilers player said how good the Wild are. In front of both nets, watch that St. Louis game. The Wild were so good around the net in the offensive zone and so good around the net in defensive zone. And just watching it practice yesterday, they are really, really good around the net. Um, you know, and it's all they practice now. Um, it's one area where I'm telling you, uh, Bruce Boudreaux is really harped on with his assistant coaches, Bob Woods and Dean Evison, and and um, that's all they practiced yesterday. It was just being hard around the net, both offensively and defensively. And, and we'll see if they can continue. I mean, we, we both know, Jim, that this team always finds a way to let you down. If they can come out of this road trip um, with three or four more wins, that'd be unbelievable because this is a very winnable road trip right now. These California teams are playing really poorly. San Jose looked good the other night against Philly, did lose, but they looked better. 
the San Jose is very beatable right now. The LA Kings just fired their coach and Anaheim's getting severely outshot every game and seems to be losing a lot lately. I mean, these games are winnable. So the wild needs to take advantage of it. Absolutely. Hey, we do have a couple of deals. Again, the next live show is Delano's Pizza, Delano's Pizza, downtown Minneapolis, 118 North 4th Street. They have mini up. They have happy hours in their Minneapolis uh, store all the time. They also have a Woodbury store, which gives them a very large delivery area around the Twin Cities. You can call the Minneapolis uh, location, 612-767-9494. You can go online and order online. That's the way I usually do it. Uh, I know we've told you about Bite Squad before. We have a deal with Bite Squad, but if you're ordering Delano's, just order directly through Delano's. Uh, it's a it's a better way for you. It's better for them as well. If you're ordering something else, use the Bite Squad promo code Talk North to get your first delivery free. We're also going to be running some specials with Bite Squad uh, during the course of the month, kind of like we did last month, centered around Big Wild and Vikings game. So uh, just keep checking back with us and watching on social media for all that stuff. But today, Delano's Pizza, lunch, they open at 11 a.m. They don't close at like 3 a.m. They're there all day, happy hours, lunch specials, lunch buffets. Check it out at delanospizza.com. Uh, tell me about Dumba, the way he's playing, and if this alters the way you view his future? Well, I mean, I, I think that he has matured, uh, you know, much defensively the last couple of years. You know, I've written all the stats in my uh, story that was on The Athletic yesterday um, about just, you know, how much better really statistically he was last year, especially five on five. And, and he's playing great now. I mean, we all know how good he is offensively. Um, had a really tough couple of games in Edmonton and Vancouver. And what I wrote about is how Bruce Boudreau didn't say a word to him. He just took knew that, that, that Dumbo would take it upon himself to uh, really get focused for the St. Louis game and have a bounce back game. And for the most part, I thought he and Suter were really good that night. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I do think there's a reason why he's gotten paid. There's a reason why the wild have tried to um, keep him right shot defensemen that could shoot the puck like him are, are not easy to find in this league. And that was one reason why the wild went above and beyond a couple of years ago, going into expansion to make sure they figured out a way to keep him on this roster even if it meant giving up a prospect and Alex Top to get them to uh, not take one of their defensemen. Um, so, um, you know, I do think he's got a bright future as long as he uh, continues to mature. And that's always the word you're going to hear with Matt Dumb, is mature um, on and off the ice. And, and if he continues to become uh, that type of player, I think that his future is bright. And when we talk about maturity, it can mean so many different things. Uh, do you think it's the way he run? you know, does he need to run his life a little bit better? Or is it just the little things about, you know, uh, being a hockey professional and, and paying attention to the right things on the ice? I, I think it's more that. I mean, look, I, I think it's both. Uh, you know, he's a young kid, like and all young kids, when you hand a lot of money and, you know, you get to live outside your, your parents' home for the first time, you know, you, you have fun. I mean, if, if <laughs> I used to say when I covered the Florida Panthers that if I was, you know, a 21 year old hockey star and given millions of dollars and put it in South Beach, that hockey probably wouldn't be my biggest thing that I'm focused on. And I think that, that Dumbo probably was learning that early in his career, like a lot of young wild players have early in their career. And I think it's getting more and more. But, you know, I will say he's a very good kid. I mean, you see all the stuff that he does, right. um, yeah. especially with the Aces program and things like that. I mean, it, 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 I think he's got a huge heart. And I, But I do think that for a while he was probably having a little too much fun away from the rink. And, and now, that you know, he's, he's becoming more professional and, and taken upon himself now that he's been earned this big contract to really help lead this team. Uh, Bruce has challenged him to be part of the leadership group. And I think he's really taking that uh, as a challenge and trying to get better. Uh, let's uh, do Twitter questions. It's a good day to catch Great. up on a lot of those. Um, let's let's thank Fixology Repair. And by Fixology. the way, you know, that, yeah. that, you know, I will say that uh, that story on Numba uh, on the Athletic is pretty good. That I think that everybody should uh, give a read uh, to. And we've we've also got a, a bunch of stuff in the works right now. And if if you want to. Uh, Subscribe to The Athletic. We have a special uh, uh, Russo Suhan show promo code, code uh, theathletic.com slash I know Russo. Uh, gets in for two ninety nine a month uh, the first year. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, as I mentioned, by the way, I've, you'll love this, uh, uh, Jim. I've, I've spent the last couple of days in San Francisco. I went to dinner, as I mentioned, with the uh, CEO, Alex Mather, the other night and spent a couple of days, at, a couple hours at headquarters yesterday. Um, and by the way, I'm really, really pumped about some of the things that they have in the works for the future. It's just going to be some of the things that we're about to announce, uh, 
to bring this uh, this site to the next level and bring more value to an incredible value already is is really awesome. But I'm walking around San Francisco. That's an interesting city. Like I have not, Jim. Like I have not because there's no hockey team in San Francisco. I've not spent a lot of time there. H- have you spent a lot of time in that city? 